everyone, we are back with another renovation project. This time we are building an office in our garden as the final piece to the puzzle of our year long house renovation project. Throughout this series I'll be sharing the whole process from start to finish of undergoing a building project like this. Enjoy! Mess. Are you ready to get another dog bed and another sleep station? That's a yes! Today is the day we are finally starting our garden office build. So it's actually happened really, really quickly. We started thinking about this over Christmas when we had my family come to stay and we realised that we would actually like our third bedroom to become a bedroom again and not an office and now that it is just permanent that Freddie works from home it makes sense that we finally do this. So I am going to take you through every part of the process in this four part YouTube series where I show you everything about us building our garden office. We are not building it ourselves, we have hired a company, they're called Garden Customs, they do all of the south east and west. They are going to be building it for us over the next three weeks and it is a much smaller scale project than what we have experienced in the past year so whilst it is a little bit of disruption I'm okay with it because it's all being built outside so our lives daily aren't really disrupted at all which is great and we desperately need the space so like I just mentioned we want our house to be a house again not a work zone. So Freddie spent the weekend pulling up the patio slabs just to kind of have a look under them and guys are about to arrive and dig all of this up this patio was such a nightmare it actually set us back a few days and this is no one's fault but we didn't realize that like, how deep it was it was three feet of like concrete and rubble underneath that raised patio you, know, you can do a thorough survey before a project starts but you still don't really know what lies beneath until you start digging so obviously we had that drain moving issue in the house build we had this patio that was just like solid three feet of concrete it took the guys almost a week to remove the rubble they have a, a truck that weighs the rubble to remove it it was five tons in the end so it was a big job and whilst we thought it was going to be two days work it was a full week now it's all level they can start doing the baseboard who knew that that back patio could cause so much chaos in one garden? All our materials have arrived. We've got all the insulation here, and then this is all the timber. It's been pre-cut at the factory, which means that it was great because we're not big on space in the garden. So it was all pre-cut, they don't have to do any cutting on site. So now it's here, it's gonna make the job a lot quicker. <laughs> we had a storm and the fence panel fell over um, and our fence is actually like falling off over here as well so we need to get that fixed although it's looking a little worse for wear I think we should just get a new one um, these are the ground screws that they've put in the ground so this is instead of like any like concrete foundations and they just put these in at certain areas in the ground and that holds the room up that's completely flattened the patio We've gone with a company that actually specialises in building garden rooms as opposed to hiring a builder that does many different types of building projects. Now, many reasons for that. First of all, builders are so booked up at the moment with people doing extensions and big projects that they don't normally always prioritise smaller projects like this. These specialised garden room companies have all the kit and expertise to do these types of jobs really seamlessly as quick as possible. They provide everything from the architect, all the timber supply, they can even supply like the switches and the floor and everything as well but I'm going to source my own because I'm so picky but yeah you can, it's like a one stop shop if you want. So that was also one of the reasons that we were doing it that we just, the management side of it is we do not have to be that involved with it which is really nice. So we start out with the architect plans and I'll pop them up on the screen now so you can see this is the design we wanted. Everything is bespoke so it's based on the size and scale of your garden and then they will build whatever shape of garden room you want. We've gone for a very standard layout with a shed on one side. We've also got cupboard storage in 
the office area, which will be for like cushions and stuff and other storage that we don't want in a shed. So this is the layout. We are happy with it. It was a very easy process, zero amends, because it's a very simple design. Once the design was done, we got the price for it, and that obviously is because once the measurements and design is done, they can work out how much wood they're gonna use and materials, labor, etc. This room is 2.7, so you're gonna get, that's Wonder. three. It's a bigger office than this, and then what's the depth? 3156. Three, one, five. So you're gonna, well, 2,800. Since we have removed the fence panels between the gardens, Winnie has taken it upon herself to try and move into my neighbour's house and she escapes every single day through this fence and really tries to not come back unless we are feeding her. So that is rejection on the highest level from my dog. So we were slightly delayed in starting the building of the room but once it gets going it is rapid. We are now coming to the end of day two and there is so much progress to see. So they're doing both my neighbours and ours at the same time, which is really efficient. So her base is already built and they're putting the insulation in on the floor there now. And then our base just started building it. So you've got base here and obviously the ground screws are under that. And then they've built the timber base, then they've put insulation in and then they're putting down this chipboard. Is that chipboard? It's called OSB. OSB. A sterling board. Then it's gonna be electric underfloor heating and then flooring. You can see that's where the office is gonna sit. The back of the garden. They're working rain or shine. Not much longer you're going to be able to do this, Winnie. That fence is going to be going back up soon. But in the meantime, she will always escape to my neighbours. Winnie! This is what she does every day. <laughs> my neighbours out today, so she can't get in. Our ground screws are going in today. Here they are. This is literally the foundations of these garden offices. Because they're quite lightweight, they don't require concrete foundations. They just have these to hold them up, to hold all the timber. <laughs> You've glued the insulation in? Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then that, that means obviously, one, you've got no water transfer coming through to the ground. Okay. Um, because you have a continual gap. Okay. And the metal brackets can't transfer water either. Great. Um, so any, any gaps or airs are then filled with the foam, which is the same as the Sunnitex products. Cool. So then no damp. No. Push down, activate, fire. Whoa. Aim for that circle. Down. Pull the trigger. Fire. Whoa. Oh, that's got a bit of bounce to it. Look at that, I, no, I, built, no. I built the office. Push. Show you the best about, boys. Okay, let's just chill anyway. out with that. These are literally holding up the building. So the frames are getting built. What they do is after they've built the base, they're building all the frames for the side on the ground and then they'll stand them up and staple them together, basically. That's where all the deals happen. Literally right there, that's your desk is going there. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously you want to know cost and 
I totally understand why people don't really share the costs of garden rooms because there isn't a set price for them and it's like every building job, it is bespoke to the project in question. So ours, our budget is 25,000 for it, which is a very standard cost for a garden room. We do have a little buffer, as always have a buffer, um, but that's we, what we want it to cost and not really any more. And I know that is a lot of money for what people look at as a glorified shed, but now that I am like deep in the process, it is so much more than that. Like this is a full additional room of our house. Uh, it's insulated, it's gonna have underfloor heating, like it's got glass 2.5 meter wide bifolds on it. Like it's high spec. Because they are designed from scratch based on your space and specification, the price is different every time. So that's another reason why I, I realize people don't really share the costs on websites when it, it is a bespoke product. Thank you so much for watching another one of my vlogs and make sure to drop by next time when I will be sharing more of the planning process as well as a detailed cost breakdown of building a garden room as well as our general progress.